Okay, so hopefully, again, try these on your own. I know sometimes the book homework can be a struggle. So if you try and figure out what you know, and then you can check it against my video and then kind of correct your errors and then do these on your own, it's going to help you more than if you just watch the video and copy down my, what I say. So again, we're, it's all about learning. And so if you do it on your, by yourself first and then watch the video to try to fix these, that's going to help you do better on these. All right. So let's look at the book. And so first of all, it says make a map drawing of small, small bundled objects. We could do this or we could do base 10 blocks. And then let's see, we want to correspond to the decimal representation. List two other decimals that your drawing could represent. Explain how to interpret your drawing as representing these decimals. All right. And I just wanted you to do C and D. All right. So, so for C, we have here, all right, and I could do um, bundled objects, but I could just do base 10 blocks. So I could let my singles be the smallest unit, which in this case would be a hundredth would be my singles. So I would have eight singles. And then I could have two longs, which would be my tenths. And then that means a flat would be this guy. Okay, now you might have another option. You might be like, well, I want the big cube to always be worth my whole, no matter what. And that's fine. So I have one cube, that would be my whole. My tenths then would be flats, so I would have two flats. And then eight singles would be what? Longs? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so it kind of depends on how you define what you define your whole as, right? Um, it's kind of up to you. Now, what other decimals could my pictures represent? Um, say, and again, it doesn't matter which picture. I'll go with this picture right here. This could be anything. Like, this could be 0.128. That would be fine. 128,000. If these guys are worth my thousands. So if my long is worth a thousandth, if each long is worth a thousand, then this picture, the exact same picture that I used for this is now going to be worth that, okay? Um, another thing this could be worth is what, 12.8. And again, I'm just gonna use this second picture. Okay, now suddenly my longs are my tenths position, so a long, corresponds, I'll use an arrow instead of the equals, but um, is what, a tenth? And so these are tenths, and then I go up a place value, whole numbers, and then 10. So again, these could be worth lots of different things. I could do 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 8. Okay, lovely. All right, and again, in this case, my longs, and I don't even know if I know the name of that, tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, Million, yeah, I think I'm getting past my knowledge here. But I would have decimal point, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine zeros. And then a one would be the value of your long. And then you would regroup into flats and into a cube. So again, that's the problem with decimals is you need to define your whole because you know, it kind of varies, all right? Like you can have each, like a long could take on different values and that's gonna change the value of your picture. All right, let's look at the next one. So for D, so for D we have point one, two, three, two. Okay, so again, um, I could make 32 like we did first semester. So I could do three longs and I'll draw them this time and I could do two singles, and I could have 32. Um, but this isn't 32, right? So it's tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, so is that 32 millionths? Um, but the picture looks the same as 32, so this could be 32, but I don't want it to be. So I want my single, right, to be point one, two, three, four, five zeros, and a one. I want it to be worth a millionth, and so then that is suddenly equal to that decimal. Now, what other decimal could it be? Well, this could be 3.2 if my singles 
are worth a tenth, that would work, okay? Um, I could also have it be worth 0 0.032. Again, my smallest place value 0 0.001, so 0 0.001, tenths, hundred, thousandth. So if that is worth a thousandth, then I'd have 32 thousandths if that takes on that value. And again, there's other ways I could draw this picture. So if you want, um, say the three, if I wanted to do a different picture, I could have the I could have three flats. So one, two, three flats. And then if I go down a place value, I would have two longs. That works. But again, then what is the value of like my flats would be worth one, two, three, four. What is that? Four zeros and a one. And then my longs would be worth, what, five zeros and a one. So then suddenly these are tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands are my flats. And then my next place value down, which I think that was millions, I think, would be the long. So again, you could draw it this way. And then again, this could take on different values depending on what you decide these guys to be worth, right? So if I say a flat is worth a tenth, right, then suddenly I have three in the tenths position because I have three tenths, and then the place value smaller than that would be hundredths, and I have two, so it could be that, all right? Or I could have 0 0.0032 if my, in this case, if the long is worth what? One, two, three, three zeros, and a one. Right, so tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. If my longs are ten thousands, then I have 32 ten thousands because I have two of the longs and then the next place value up would be my flat, which would be a thousandth. So again, with decimals, you have to define your unit so that we know what we're talking about. That's the big idea there. All right, so let's look at problem number three in the book. We're on page 25. So it says, describe and make a drawing showing how to represent 1.438 and 0.804. So again, this would be 1 and 438 thousands. And this would be, there would be no and or anything because there's no number in front of the decimal. So this would be 804 thousands. All right. As any length by using strip paper in a way that fits with showing the structure of the base 10 system. Okay. Um, this one we should probably be able to do with a ruler. You know, we'll see how these go. All right, so now again, if you're gonna just sketch it, you kind of want to make sure, I don't know, that you're at least looking to scale. All right, so I'm going to do, let's see, what, 1.438. So if this is my, I'm gonna let 10, that's gonna be my one, just to help me draw to scale. So this is my one. So then I would have four, and again, I know there's 10 centimeters in over here, so that's why each centimeter is a tenth. So I'd have four of those. So this is 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And if you're going to eyeball it, you want to make sure that 10 of these really do fit in that. All right, and then I would have three millimeters. So again, that's going to be challenging. All right, so this is my one part here. This is my 0 0.4. This guy is my three hundredths, and then we're just gonna, I'm gonna, just gonna kinda draw this little dark thing. That's gonna be my point zero zero eight because I can't, can't really draw that, okay? Um, let's see, make drawings to show how to represent that by lengths by using strips of paper in a way. Okay, all right, and then the next one, point, what was it, eight, oh, four. All right, so, Again, I'm going to draw eight tenths, so I'm going to draw this. And again, you should see eight of them, so you don't want to just have a big strip and say it's 0.8. You want to see eight sets of 0.1 because you have eight tenths, and so you want students to be able to see the eight tenths. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tenths. Now, this is the problem. We have zero of the hundreds. Those would be my millimeters. So, and do you guys see that my four would be even smaller than a millimeter? So that's the problem. I mean, it's just gonna, and that's the problem I had up here too, 
it's so tiny, right, that it's not even a millimeter. So we're just going to draw a little arrow to that, to 0.04, because we need to keep it to scale. And as tempting as it is, is to draw four little lines or whatever, I just can't fit it in, okay? All right, and then let's look. So um, what I'm seeing here is if you're going to just eyeball it, so like say I, I don't know, say I don't use a ruler, and say I just decide that this is one, then you got to kind of cut this. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, to figure out the value of your tenths. So then like you would have to draw your tenths if you don't use a ruler, like you would have to make sure the size of these corresponds to 10 of them fitting in here. So this would be like 1.3. And then if you're gonna do another place value, then you have to kind of like, if you cut these into tens, you know, they're gonna be super tiny. So I can't even draw them probably small enough. So this would be like 0 0.01, 0 0.01. You'd wanna make sure that 10 of those fit in there, which these might even be too big to get that. That's why using a ruler is nice because we can at least get our whole number, our tenths and our hundreds pretty accurate. The thousandths are a little tricky. All right, let's look at number four. Okay, Jerome says that the unlabeled tick marks on the number line and should be, or the unlabeled one should be 7.10. Why might Jerome think this? Explain to Jerome why he is not correct. Describe how you could help Jerome understand the correct answer. All right, so this is more of a teachery thing. Okay, so let's look up here. All right, so the issue is we have, what, a big tick here. This is a big tick, and we have a big tick here. And so we have really our big ticks are whole numbers here. So these should be the same whole number, and then we have our little ticks in the middle. And if you look at his error, he's viewing this as base 10, but he's not regrouping. So do you see that he's viewing, this is 7.1. He's kind of probably viewing it as 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, maybe, but then he'd probably get 80. So he'd probably get 8.0, probably not that. What he is probably viewing this is just the number behind the decimal as counting. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So if this is 7.9, of course, 7.10 should come next, all right? So if we think about this, we know that our big ticks should have been whole numbers because if they're the structure of a number line is that if your big ticks, if this is a seven and you put 7.0, then this should be 7.1. But this should just be seven and this should just be eight. And we should have, and again, I'm gonna switch to a pencil because I know myself and I make a lot of mistakes, so. I'm gonna get a new mechanical pencil here. So let's try one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, not perfect, but good enough. Um, uh, maybe not, it's bugging me. I'm gonna fix it. Make it just a little bit better. Let's see. One, two, no, I don't like that either. Sorry about that. Is that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine. Yep. Okay. I think it's not perfect, but it's good enough. So if my n ticks, this is really a seven and this is an eight. So then these, if you do this, 7.2, 7.3, 7.4, 7.5, 7.6, 7.8, 7.9. Oh boy. Did I one, two, three, four, five. Six. How about, oh boy, Julie. What? 7.7, 7 7.8, 7 7.9. There we go. I knew I count my tick marks. Then they, if you do the big ticks first, then you kind of know that these should be to the tenths. But the issue is they have this understanding of counting like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and after nine comes 10. And so that's a problem. So one way is to um, ha make sure that kid understands that that zero means you don't have any of that place value. So if you cover up that zero, they can see that they already have 7.1 on the number line. And so... 7.10 cannot be bigger than 7.9 because it's the same as this number down here. That may or may not make sense to a kid, all right? So I'm gonna, in the next video, I'm gonna talk about kind of what would make more sense and it will be a short video, but I'm running out of time here. So I'll make another video on that one.